The RTX 4070 may not be the only GPU getting a release in the near future, and with AMD's RX 7900 series graphics card right around the corner, benchmarks and prices have begun to leak. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we'll be going over various topics pertaining to upcoming graphics cards. The first bit of news we have comes from our usual Twitter leakers, Copite7Kimi and Harukaze. Copite posted some specs which pertain to an RTX 4070. Now, this GPU isn't to be confused with the RTX 4070 Ti, which was the unlaunched RTX 4080 12GB. This is a totally different GPU, which is utilizing the AD104 die, but it's more cut down. This GPU will have 5,888 CUDA cores, 12GB of G6X memory rated at 21 gigabits per second, 36 megabytes of L2 cache, and a 250 watt TDP. Harukaze also shared a specs table which included both the 4070 Ti and 4070 along with the previous generation Ampere GPUs. His table seems to have more info in it that Copite's post was missing, such as SM and ROPS count. Harukaze's chart also included info pertaining to memory bandwidth, and when we compare memory bandwidth to previous gen cards, that's been slimmed down quite a bit compared to the RTX 3070 Ti. After seeing these specs, it shouldn't come as a surprise that both the 4070 Ti and 4070 appear to be quite underwhelming. When we went over this last time and talked about Nvidia unlaunching the 4080 12GB and then rebranding it to the 4070 Ti to save face, as that was a GPU which was already under spec when compared to previous gen models, and now we're getting another GPU which has been further cut down and really doesn't deserve to be characterized as an X70 class GPU. It's not impressive and it's just pathetic, period. When the RTX 4090 was announced and Jensen stated that cheap GPU pricing were, was a thing of the past, along with declaring Moore's Law is dead, he really wanted you to believe that, as that would give them the excuse to raise prices for the entire lineup relative to the pricing which was set for previous gen models. They don't want to sell you an X80 class card for $700 anymore, as that is what they want the mid-range to be. Given the fact that Nvidia had originally planned on releasing the 4070 Ti for $900 when it was called the 4080 12GB, but will cut its price down to probably $799 due to rebranding, I can see them releasing this 4070 for $600 or $649 US, which is a terrible deal if you ask me. Given the specs that are on this table and what Copite reported, this is an RTX 4070 at best that you're getting and it will cost you over $600 now. Just like how the 4070 Ti is basically an RTX 4060 Ti and you know, that thing is just way too obscenely priced. I will come back to this pricing in just a moment, but keep those figures in your head. As for performance, we know where the 4070 Ti will land, somewhere in between an RTX 3090 and 3090 Ti. And don't get me wrong, it's not the level of performance that I have a problem with, it's the pricing, as that kind of performance should be attainable for less than $500 at this point. Now, since we know where the 4070 Ti will roughly land, that should allow us to estimate where the RTX 4070 will land and how it compares to last gen. The 4070 is sporting 5,888 CUDA cores, which is around a 23% drop from the 4070 Ti. Therefore, I think it will be likely the 4070 will sit in between the RTX 3080 and 3080 Ti when, when it comes to rasterization performance. Maybe most of the time it will be closer to the 3080, but when it comes to ray tracing performance, it'll probably sit around a 3080 Ti level, as Ada Lovelace is quite a bit faster than Ampere in that area. Take this info with a grain of salt, all of this is speculation. But this level of performance is what makes the most sense for me when it comes to this GPU and what the specs are. Let's circle back to pricing. In my previous video, I talked about how Nvidia may be considering a price drop for the RTX 4080. Perhaps later this month, if they do drop the 4080 down to say $999 or $1099, then I can't see the 4070 Ti still retaining that $899 price point it had when it was branded as a 4080 12GB. $799 is what seems more likely for this card given Nvidia's current stance on the market, which means if it's at that price point, then we should expect the 4070 to come out at around that $600 to $650 price point. This is an optimistic view, for all we know, Nvidia may still release the 4070 Ti at $899 as they originally planned, and then the 4070 will be like over $700, 
which leads to market regression for the previous tier cards. You'll essentially be getting 3080 like performance for the same price over two years later. It's really disappointing. Just go back and take a look at previous generations. A 3070 was significantly faster than a 2080. The 2070 was faster than a 1080. The 1070 would easily beat a 980. And the 970 also wouldn't have any trouble beating a 780. Do you guys remember which cards would match the X80 class cards from the previous gen? It would be the X60 class card. Think GTX 1060 or 2060. If this wasn't enough proof to convince you that you're being fleeced and the 4070 and 4070 Ti are really just 4060 series, then I don't know what will. Moving on to our next subject, and there were some leaked benchmarks surrounding AMD's upcoming RX 7900 XTX and RX 7900 XT. This was posted over at Video Cards, and they've got some results from us from the popular 3D Mark benchmark suite. There were four test results, two from 3D Mark Time Spy at 4K and 1440p, and two from Firestrike at 4K and 1440p. And 3D Mark Time Spy, which is a DX12 benchmark, we can see both graphics cards are trailing NVIDIA's RTX 4080. I noticed that they're closer at 4K than they are at 1440p. At 4K, you'll also notice that the 7900 XTX is 29% faster than the 6950 XT. However, at 1440p, that margin gets closer to 16%. Kind of reminds me of what happened with NVIDIA's Ampere architecture, where the best performance was attained at higher resolutions, and AMD themselves have openly stated that RDNA 3 was designed with higher resolutions in mind. When it comes to the DX11 benchmark, Firestrike, things change. Now we're seeing the 7900 XTX beat the 4080 at both resolutions, and it's also 24% faster than the 6950 at both resolutions as well. However, you can see that in DX11, the previous gen Radeon cards also beat out their Nvidia counterparts. One thing you have to remember with 3 d Mark is that it's sometimes not the best indicator of real-world performance. Once we take a look at a wide variety of gaming benchmarks from various reviewers, we should have a clearer picture on how they perform and where they land relative to the competition. Based on all the info I've seen, I believe the 7900 XTX in rasterization should be faster than the 4080 on average. Yeah, there will be some titles where the NVIDIA card will pull ahead, and there will also be some titles where AMD's cards will pull ahead, and who knows, maybe the 7900 XTX may be trading blows with the 4090 in those rare instances. Reviews for this GPU are what I will be watching and reading very closely. The last topic I wanted to briefly discuss with you guys was in regards to pricing for the 7900 XTX and 7900 XT. We already know what the official MSRP will be for the reference models, and unlike NVIDIA, AMD still distributes reference models to its partners. So whether it's Gigabyte, Asus, MSI, you'll see them at retailers. They'll be in what looks like aftermarket packaging, but it will be a reference card. I actually like that they still do that because it creates more avenues for customers to pick up this model rather than having to go on their website, which may not even work at launch, or be exclusive to one retailer like Best Buy. Along with that, AABs will have their own custom models coming out. We've seen the designs from Sapphire, XFX, Gigabyte, and more, allowing more opportunities for consumers. When it comes to aftermarket models though, they're generally more expensive than the reference cards. Depending on the model and how premium it is, which involves a beefier cooler, lighting, vapor chamber, shroud, PCB materials, etc., their prices can go up considerably. Momomo over on Twitter posted a screenshot from Amazon US, and it includes two custom XFX RX 7900 graphics cards, and we can see both models are significantly more expensive than the reference card. The XFX 7900 XT is 979 At that point, you might as well consider a reference 7900 XTX. It just makes no sense to buy, and unfortunately, a lot of AIB cards for the 7900 XT will fall into this trap. The markup on them will be too much, and they'll be cannibalized by the 7900 XTX, which seems awfully familiar. We have the same situation with uh, custom 4080s, which are on the heels of the 4090 base price. It's the good old movie theater popcorn pricing strategy which strikes again. As for custom 7900 XTX cards, they will shock quite a lot of people with their markups, and that can be more severe depending on where you are in the world. I'm not sure what the exact ratio will be compared to reference cards. Typically, AIB cards are more abundant, and that will deter some buyers away from AMD and sway them over to NVIDIA. I mean, when we're talking about the consumer who's in the $1,000 plus GPU camp, money isn't at the top of their priority list, and what they're after is the best performance, which the 4090 is currently the best of the best. 
and that's what they'll be going after. The embargo for the RX 7900 series will be lifting very soon, so I'll post another video once we've had the chance to find out just how fast these cards really are, and what their price to performance is like, how they compare to Nvidia, etc. So be on the lookout for that one. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.